What's up everyone, I'm going to be testing out the Flare Pro 2 today. I've never tried actually using this machine. I'll be trying to prepare the coffee as best as I can, but the actual making of the coffee, normally I would do that in my espresso machine. I just press a button. Now I have to do it by hand with a lever. I'm very excited about that because on this channel I love arcade sticks and so having things with levers is is hopefully going to be a natural transition. I don't know, it all sounds very, very complicated and that's kind of why I'm so excited. Now, most of these tools are things that the Flare Pro 2 comes with, and the main ones are things like the vessel where the hot water will go in, and then I'll pump the hot water through this, which is the portafilter basket. Before we can put the coffee in here, we need to measure how much coffee we're going to actually drink. So from the tutorial video, they actually said put like 16 grams in and you'll get like 40 grams of coffee out. I figured that's a good place to start. Here are the beans I've got here. These are from Mandeling Tano Batak. It's a medium roast. The way you roast the coffee beans is going to change how you grind it and how quickly or slowly you push the hot water through it. It all sounds like there are so many variables that you can change while making coffee. In order to make sure I've got the right amount, I'm going to get the scale on. I'm going to turn it on and use this. It's a dosing cup that actually comes with the Flare Pro 2, which is exciting because I didn't have a dosing cup before. Now we're going to look at those coffee beans. They are medium roasted and not too oily, as you can see. Wasn't aware that actually just roasting coffee darkly is what causes them to end up with that shine with the like coffee oils coming off them, the more you learn. Now you may be wondering why today is not a while I'm making coffee episode. I have a series that I run while I talk about various topics. But the reason it's not a while I'm making coffee episode is because there's just too much going on here. I want to focus on my first time ever using this machine. I want to focus entirely on the actual making of the coffee without trying to stress myself out and do multiple things at the same time. And the next thing we need to do is decide how coarse we're going to grind this coffee. According to the grinding chart, the Easy Presso X Pro S, this is going to be something around the 5.5 marks, and we're going to see how this turns out. It might be too fine, it might be, it might be too coarse. We will see in a moment. In my normal coffee machine with the previous Brazil roast that I made, I put it on 5.5 and it took about 50 seconds to come out. So I'm actually a little worried that this might be a little bit too fine, but let's just see how things go. So get these tasty beans into the grinder. It's really interesting because normally when I make coffee, I only use like eight to 12 grams of coffee. So now with all these espresso recipes starting around 15 grams or, you know, people putting 18 to 25 grams of coffee in, it's all a bit like, whoa, this is a lot more coffee than I'm used to using. The hobby gets more expensive, of course. So it's not a while I'm making coffee episode, but let's do it anyway. Let's grind. Uh-oh, it feels very loose which means either the beans are softer or I've set the grind setting a little bit too coarse. I'm aware that also you can spray the coffee beans with water before you put them in and get rid of some of that static that makes it cling to the inside of the vessel, but I forgot about it, so didn't do it. I haven't actually got a spray bottle prepared anyway. All right, so the beans are ground. The next step is to attempt to get it into this brew basket without getting coffee all over the place. I don't have a lot of faith in myself. Let's see how things go. It should go better than before because this brew basket with the, which comes with the Flare Pro 2, also comes with a dosing funnel. When you put this funnel on here, you can see it makes it easier to stir the grinds around without getting coffee everywhere. So I'm getting coffee everywhere. And then I will take the grinds from the actual canister itself and I will try and pop them in here like so. Wow, now that I've got this, Funnel. It's making my life so much easier. What I'm going to do is take this, my WDT tool, can't even remember what that stands for, I'm going to try and stir these grounds around. Oh man, with the funnel it's so much easier. I can actually stir these grounds around and make sure that there are no clumps. Wow, okay. The next thing we're going to do is temp this. So I'm going to use this, it's my temping tool. Okay. I think that is done. That felt very satisfying to do, by the way. I might just give it a little bit more. And there you have it. It looks like the puck is now prepared for coffee making. The next thing we need to do 
is take the puck screen. Hopefully that's correct. I can't really explain just how <laughs> nervous I am that I'm gonna screw something up because when you're working with stuff that's at pressure, like water at high pressure, I don't want like hot water spurting around everywhere. I don't want things to explode and break and I've got a, I've got a pressure gauge. I've never made a coffee with a pressure gauge before. So the only thing we need to do now is preheat this brew head and what I'm going to do is I've been told that you can just actually place your brew head on top of the water instead of the actual cover. Let's turn this on. All right, while the water is boiling and the brew head is getting preheated, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna try and prepare the rest of this setup. So in order to do so, I've got the drip tray in place. I'm gonna place that down here. I'm gonna take my scale, which is actually kind of huge. I'm gonna put the cup underneath. I'm going to put the puck itself. I'm gonna slide that on top there and then we're going to attempt to do this all with the right timing it's all kind of stressful i've never been so nervous about making a coffee before what is going on it does look and feel warm i'm going to pour the just boiled water in here make sure it's all the way in all right i'm going to put the gauge on here now starting the timer now ramp this up slowly to about two or three bar Gently go of this. <laughs> I was not aware that it was going to push so hard that I was actually squishing the camera over here. Oh, man, so stressful. Did you, I don't know if you could hear it, but it was like going, it was like shaking because I wasn't really in the right position. I was like, oh my goodness, this is much more pressure than I thought was going to be required. It's not hard to do, but if you're not in the right position, you may not be prepared for it. Okay, this is the fruit of our labor. 45 grams from 16 grams of coffee. It's a little bit more coffee than I was expecting to make, but we did it in about 50 seconds, which seems about the right amount of time. I think the time has come to swill it around just because I want to enjoy the swilling process, which I you know, I don't usually do. Oh, that's so exciting. It's time to give the espresso a little stir. Oh, it's very thick. Time to taste it. Oh. Oh, that's really bizarre. Okay, that tastes, whoa. That actually tastes like coffee from a coffee shop. Whoa, wait, hang on a second. Oh, but it's very, very, oh, it's very, it's like very, not mild. It's very please, pleasing, it's very, it's very calm. Oh, okay. It is actually really smooth. What's going on? It actually felt smooth to stir. That's bizarre. Is that is that a normal thing? Mmm. Okay, so obviously it's a completely different coffee than before. What I was drinking before from the DeLonghi machine, when I was experimenting with the bottomless Porto filter, was a Brazil washed coffee. I was doing a one to two ratio and it was coming in a little bit too slow and then it was coming a little bit too fast and I was trying to dial it myself in in the middle. What we did here with the Mandeling Tano Batak, it's a medium roast, we did 16 grams in, 45 grams out, and it took about 50 seconds to do. So it was probably like 20 seconds of pre-infusion and about 30, 35 seconds of extraction. And I'm no expert, but that's absolutely insane. Oh wow, it, it tastes like a coffee now. That's insane. I'm still feeling a little bit of, I don't know if it's sourness. I assume that means that I didn't over extract it. Whatever it is, it's insanely tasty. <laughs> this turned out significantly better than I was expecting. I can't explain to you how smooth this tastes. It feels a little bit like, maybe it's just because it's a brown drink and I'm looking at it, I'm like, well, brown foods taste like caramel. So this brown drink probably also tastes like caramel. But it genuinely, it genuinely has like a smoother texture to the coffee that I had been making before in the DeLonghi. That's nuts. That's nuts. I have no idea if I made it well, but I mean, all I can do is compare. And compared to the espressos I've had that I've made before by myself in the past few days on my machine, on the 
big electric machine. That's super smooth. Is that like a normal thing? Is it supposed to taste smoother if you make it by hand with a lever? As I understand it, one of the nice things about doing things with a lever is that as you feel it physically in your arm in the lever, you can actually release pressure or apply more pressure as required so that you always get like a good shot out of whatever you've prepared. So that, that aspect of the coffee is what I find so exciting. You can get in there and like extract something from a product that other people are unable to do just because they haven't gone into the technique. So for, for me, it's for things like fighting games. A lot of people will play the surface of the fighting game and go, you know, this is fun. I'm having a great time pressing buttons. But if you go into the techniques of learning some of the mind games and learning some of the techniques that you can do with your fingers to get like certain shortcuts or to double tap things, to plink things, the, all of those extra deeper techniques are ways that you can put your hand in and like extract like a level of like a, a areas of joy that are inaccessible to the casual user. It's the same thing with classical music. There are certain classical music pieces, pieces of music that anyone can enjoy. One of my favorite symphonies is Brahms Symphony 2. It's the one that just sounds like l the lullaby tune. If you only listen to it once or twice, it's like that was a nice tune, but if you go deeper and you hear the seeds of the themes that were planted like in the first few bars of the symphony and you hear them come back and they're inverted or they're retrograded or they're developed upon. There are so many ways, especially with something like classical music, where you go in, you learn a little bit more about the music. Not, you don't need to learn a huge amount, but you just learn a little bit more about the music and your enjoyment. You didn't even think you could get more enjoyment from it, but you, your enjoyment... It expands not just 10 times, not just 20 times. It's like 50, 100 times more enjoyment out of a piece of music just by knowing a little bit about how that music is constructed. I definitely feel like with a coffee, although my knowledge isn't there yet, I'm getting in there with the techniques and I feel like next I need to learn more about the knowledge. What kind of flavors are out there? If I compare this coffee to this coffee, what are the differences? If I can build up my knowledge as well, then I can also work on my technique so that I can get the most out of every coffee and find areas of flavor and joy, pure joy out of the drink that I wasn't able to access before. I can't, I can't explain. <laughs> I'm going to cry. I can't explain how good this tastes. Oh, man. And what's insane is that it actually gets better after, right? Like, this is the first time I've ever used the Flare Pro 2. If I come back to this experience in the future, I may try to, like, compare it. And I'll be like, wow, by comparison, the, the shot that I first pulled on this day, on this shoot right now, I'll be like, that was one of the worst coffees ever made. And, and... That's exciting, knowing that it could get much better. For me, on this day now, knowing as little as I do about coffee and having zero experience with this, and now this is like my first time ever using this machine. Oh, <laughs> I'm blown away. I'm absolutely blown away. I can't believe that went as well as it did. And what's crazy is that in you know, in the future, I'll look back on this and I'll be like, maybe maybe it didn't go well at all. That was not just a, a, a crazy experience making it. And it wasn't just a, a joyful experience feeling like I had achieved something, but just as a pure drinking experience. Like I got to also be the receiver of the product at the end. And I think there's some probably psychology that goes along with, you know, when someone makes food for you, it tastes great. When you make food for yourself, it also tastes great, but it's in a different way. Sometimes it like tastes better if someone makes it for you. I have no idea how this would have tasted if someone had made this shot for me versus me making it myself. But the enormous combination of making it and then also being the consumer of the product itself, that was a smooth textured coffee. And I have never experienced that. I don't think I've ever experienced an espresso like that before. I mean, you, you get espressos, like, you know, sometimes they serve you an espresso at the end of a fancy dinner. You're like, oh yeah, would you like a, a hot coffee at the end of your meal? I'm like, yeah, sure. And you get that little coffee and it comes in a little white cup that says Ely on the front of it. And you're like, oh, I'm going to drink my espresso now, even though it's like 11 p.m. What's wrong with me? I've never experienced it like that before. That was... <sighs> I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm really emotional right now. I'm so happy. And I, I'm aware that also some of the joy comes from just the fact that, 
you know, there's caffeine in this drink. And so that it's, it's, you know, sparked all my neurons and I'm really, I'm really focused right now. And so maybe all the emotions I'm feeling are amplified through basically the caffeine of the drink. But all in all, I just want to say that this might just be one of the coolest, greatest, most exciting purchases I've ever made <laughs> in my life. Like, normally you buy stuff and you know that you're going to use it and have fun from using it. But what's crazy is that this is something that I'm going to enjoy using and also be the receiver of the product, the byproduct that comes out of it. Normally, like, when I draw something, like, yeah, I enjoy making it, but, you know, I'm not going to really enjoy reading my own comic the same way that someone else is going to enjoy reading it because they're the receiver of a story they've never heard before. This is like, I'm the creator of the story and I have no idea <laughs> what it's going to, what it's going to sound like when it's read back to me. That's what the story of the espresso is. I can kind of guess, but the whole science of it all, like the experimentation and seeing how the result turns out differently to how I had predicted it would go. It's, it's just mind blowing. It's mind blowing. Didn't go how I expected in a good way. I was expecting it to actually fall apart. I was expecting maybe the pressure gauge to like pop straight off and break. I thought hot water was going to go everywhere. I have no idea if it looked nice because I haven't checked the footage yet, but the taste, I mean, it, it always comes down to with these creative things. It's like, when you draw something, did it look good? When you wrote some music, did it sound good? When you made a coffee, did it taste good? That tasted, that tasted insane. Listen, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you're interested to see more, make sure you're subscribed to the channel and check out this video next if you want to see more of my coffee making escapades. For sure, please make sure you check that video out. Comment below, what is your favorite way of making coffee? Have you ever tried doing it with a manual lever or do you think it's just better to make it using a big expensive machine? Let me know in the comments section below. <sighs> I'm gonna make myself another coffee now, I think. <laughs> That's all for today. I'll see you real, real soon.